Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome in. I hope everyone is doing well. So today Masa is proud to present the Malaysia Architecture Education Online Lecture Series. And this is our 11 lecture series so far. Thank you for joining us. So basically Masa stands for Malaysia Architecture Student Alliance and is a non-profit student committee acting directly under PEM, which is the Pertubuhan Architect Malaysia, consisting of student representatives from all architecture institutes in Malaysia. During this period of time, Masa and PEM have decided to launch this online lecture series for students to be more productive and gain more insight. Architect Adrenta is the head of PEM Education and Dr. Z Zairo is the convener. There will be more series coming up after this one, so do keep in touch with Masa Instagram and Facebook page. My name is Lindsay Laikai, and I'm a Masa representative from UCSI University. I will be your MC for today. I'd like to welcome our guest for today, architect Adric Chu Fu Liang. He was born in year 1976 in Malaysia. Architect Adric obtained a Bachelor in Architecture from University of Malaya and Bachelor of Science in Housing Building and Planning from University of Science Malaysia. He had traveled around the world including Asia, China, Japan, India, America, French, Finland, England and Germany. He started his architecture career under a few well-known architect firms such as T.R. Hamza and Yang Sandran Bahad, Zach L.G. Sandran Bahad, W. Architect, SCDA, and W.O.H.A. He was involved in various international and local prestigious projects, including master planning, mixed development, residential, commercial, office tower, factory, schools, and others. On October 2015, he formed his O2 Design Atelier, Sandran Bahad in collaboration with Chu Fulia Architect. So, um, enjoy and relax everybody. We have a Q&A section at the end of the talk. So if you have any question, feel free to type them down in the chat box so we can attend to them at the end of the sharing. So, um, greeting Architect Adric. I'll now pass the floor to you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Vinci. Uh, shall I start? Yeah, sure. You can start. Huh? Okay, um, I thanks for Vinci for introductions. Uh, today's purpose is actually to share out some of the design uh, competition idea that we have actually won and also uh, some we didn't manage to get to the first prize. Uh, the purpose of sharing is um, to let everyone know that uh, this is our strategy of approach uh, for the competition. At the same time, uh, uh, it's also very much how to see how we we approach the design and also the, the the site. So let's start. So we start with our first project. Uh, this one is 19, uh, uh, 2006, uh, 2016 uh, competition scheme that is organized by PEM and Prima Home. It's a national competition. Um, this competition is actually calling calling to design a Prima Home in um, in Sento. The Prima Home, the site is actually near to the Sento, next to the Klang River. <coughs> so from the from the uh, if you look at the site, right? This is the Klang River. Can you, can you see my cursor? This is the Klang River, and then this is a site where you know there's oh uh, so called. Uh, police squatters on this side here and there's an open car park on this side and the rest is all housing area so this area is around the site is around seven acre land and uh, is open up for competitions to to um, provide an affordable home for the uh, central uh, residents so what we do is we understanding the way how we approach the design is we understanding the current issue in the market macro context, uh, the current housing issue in Malaysia. So we know that the current housing issue, the high price is because of the you know, construction cost increase and then and also during the, because of the maintenance fee that require. 
and of course some of the housing area which is uh, not provide well ventilated is also very hot and especially another issue that we are looking at is also the social issue which is a uh, is a lot of social issue like in Malaysia that happens there's a lot of crime and then lack of community interactions and then kids uh, with the working parents so because of that it becomes a uh, issue social issue that we face in the macro context of Malaysia and then we also look at the because Sento is famous of the multi races so we also look at the uh, racial tension due to the pro design inclusive so from here we analyze the site uh, from there we identify the strategy how we want to approach the, the site and also the design so from first thing is we look at the project Hello? So can you uh, make it into a full screen? Oh, okay. Yeah. I think you accidentally closed yeah. it. Is it okay? Uh, can you try to make it full screen? Yeah, yes. this Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's full screen, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so... so yeah, I... How sh okay, I can minimize this. Okay, <clears throat> first thing is we approach the site. From there, we analyze it's a site like as like most of you did in the school, right? So the site is basically facing towards the Crank River, uh, which is on the right, right uh, messing that when approaching. And then also we study about the sun's orientation, which is also the uh, tropical approach, where the wind coming from and the sun coming from. And then we understand about, we analyze the site circulations and also the the messing, which is a solid and void, and then also the green port ratio that we want to approach. Uh, of course, you as what you all did in school as well, we try out the site in many, many approach, whether we go for a low rise linear, whether we go for a wall type uh, housing, or whether we go for a continuous uh, perimeter approach housing. So we will try out until we satisfied with the messing that we intend to approach. Um, so we look at in other con other issue as well, which is we also look at affordability. From this affordability, we look at the standard um, housing that design that is have a one core with the two two um, wings of uh, approaching. We know that we're going to design for affordable housing, so we will try to maximize the efficiency in each floor. So one core serving as many as unit as possible. Uh, in order to make, in order to reduce down the cost of construction, because ultimately it's a, a for the a prima home that we we target for, and <clears throat> as far from that we also look into a clean way, which is we can instead of doing a single load, single uh, every floor of lean way, we also look at multiple double floor of lean way. From here, we can also cut down the construction cost purely on affordability issue. And from this, you can see this diagram here. And then from there, another approach that we are looking at, of course, is about the number of units. Uh, we challenge, of course, the Prima Homes. This is competition, of course, in the reality, it can't really happen. So what we do is we challenge the brief of the Prima Home. Prima Home calling for the smallest unit is actually 450 units. So we try to propose as small as a 226 unit, uh, square feet per unit uh, in each unit for the studio type. Uh, we want to show to uh, Prima Home that in this competition idea with a small unit, they can actually live well with the uh, flexible of spaces that we, uh, we, uh, that we design for. <clears throat> as after that, look at the two bedroom and three bedroom bedrooms size we challenge the size in order to reduce down the cost of construction one way we actually reduce the size of the units itself and of course we uh, uh, all the building construction is governed by UPBL uh, so we look into the limitations of UPBL which is you know how to maximize the height floor to floor height and how to minimize the floor to floor height in order to get to reduce down the height of the residential so this is the uh, site plan that you, you see. From here, the way how uh, pedestrian approach, this, this is the higher block, and this part is the lower block. We cascade down the, uh, all the housing area, so make sure that everyone have a better view towards the river side. Uh, the profile of the housing is also in the, tri in the 
um, in the what do you call uh, trickle wings because we try to circulate it around the center space of the courtyard. And this center space is where the interaction space between the uh, residents. And okay, so when you're coming in here, you approach the side. Uh, this is your drop off, and then they're coming into the center courts. From this court, you will lead to the next court area, and then you are leading up to the next uh, particular court area. So this entire uh, housing is actually is a journey of spaces from one space to the next one, and then falling from the towards the end. Uh, if you look at the units, we also study the multiple type of units, which is they can actually interlock among each other. From this interlocking among each other, they also allow for cross ventilations and also uh, and maximize the spaces. As mentioned just now, we try out the space time. Uh, it's a space time concept. When uh, we we know that we know that in the housing area, that um, people live in people live and people work. Um, you know, during daytime, people seldom stay at home, and then during night time, only be occupied. And different spaces according to the different times. So of course, studio type we also look into the bunk bed that you know in the daytime they're not really occupied. At the night they can actually expand out the home and become the sleeping area. Uh, and the, the typical floor on the daytime on the uh, this two bedroom, two bedroom on the daytime they actually using most of the time is actually a living space. So we open out the bedroom as a part of the part of the extended out the space into the bedroom. At night, they actually the bedroom can actually extend out towards the living area because this is the time that we use at night. Same with the third, uh, third floor as well, uh, three bedroom as well. So we play with the time and space, which is the during daytime is uh, open up a living area, so you have a better, uh, bigger spaces uh, psychologically, and then at night you actually can partition out to become a smaller space for your own privacy purpose. Uh, we look into constructions of the you know uh, constructions of how to reduce now the cost of the uh, from prima home using the uh, bubble deck system which is they can uh, save in terms of concrete uh, construction yeah <clears throat> and of course we also look into environmentally sustainable where you know the visions of the you know if you look at the section from the top is actually uh, everyone have a view towards the river and if you look at the diagram here we know that this is very common among all the students you all will know that you know sun coming in from the glass will be cause heat then we put the lures on the front will be reduced down the heat and the cross ventilation at the same time this is a core which is allowed for natural ventilation we need to look into the how the security between the how to create a so-called a natural barrier between the boundary and ourselves instead of putting up the fence, we create so-called a bias well uh, fencing, which is uh, a void from people to coming in to the site as well. Uh, from this perspective, you can see there's a series of cascading uh, terracing uh, public area or communal area, which is uh, encouraged for interactions. If you look at the courtyards, we are looking. We we know that the social issue amongst the uh, uh, housing is important so how to encourage the interaction between the the units we create quite a small spaces uh, uh, so into the units at the same time allow for more where the students where the residents can actually come out and interact especially if they want to dry out the big clothes they can actually come out here and dry out and looking back on the culture of how we live in the old days where we, you know, we come out here and then we interact among each other. This is the, the space of the uh, courtyard space that we provided. So at the same time, we also look into multi-racial uh, interactions. We integrate between the multiculture, where all this uh, uh, resemblance of pattern and also the culture, where they are having an events, they can actually live together as as if like this is the space where they. Uh, uh, interact. If you look at the rooftop, we also look into a multi-racial, uh, multi-religious uh, interactions. Instead of just providing a surau, typical one, we also look into other religious like temple, uh, Indian temple, Buddhist temple, church, 
and other community which is they can actually interact among each other throughout the entire landscaping. And looking back to here, if this is our overall perspective, <clears throat> the reason why we subdivide into six uh, blocks, uh, three blocks is actually building up towards a high rise. Uh, this part is the highest part which is facing towards the MRT is key to landmark to where people can go back to their home where, when they come up from the MRT. And then the lower block, which is not require any foundation, which is actually reduce some of the cost of building. And at the same time, it also allow a vision towards a, a river, which is without blocking from the uh, unit behind. Okay, now I move to another project. Is everyone here clear? Yeah, sure. Hello? Yeah, everyone is clear. Can you see? Yeah, it's clear. It's clear? Yeah, okay. clear. Uh, clear then, yeah, I can continue here. Yeah. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so, second project is actually Pam Norton Chapter, uh, Teluk Kumba Web Market. Uh, so, it's also a national competition. We won the second prize. Uh, we didn't get the job. Um, so, this one is basically uh, Pam Norton Chapter. They organize a, a competition to, uh, to want to build a web market near the Teluk Kumba area. It's actually not southern side of uh, Penang. Uh, that area, so we went to the site, we drive out to Penang and have a look. Uh, the site is actually a hilly site. It's actually full of, um, full of uh, uh, durian tree and nature tree. So from there, you know, we sort of like inspire what we want to do with the, this market. Uh, so, you know, typically pet market is very common in Malaysia and you know, uh, this is like a daily life uh, uh, event that we want to go through. Um, so, government have actually have uh, provide different different type of uh, typology of wet market. And, and this type of wet market, most of the time under the building is not very successful, uh, really too well. And there's a few reasons for which is we identify there's a problem with the wet market. And happen to be, if you look back to our culture, right, this is a Malaysian market and street, right, it's actually very common among Malaysians. No doubt there is non, sometimes it's not very hygienic, but it can be, it can be, it can be changeable in time in very fast moment. And everything is done by a very flexible way. And also in a very low cost effective way, you see. And that's the reason why this kind of wet market is still surviving and doing very well uh, nowadays. Uh, so this is what we provide <coughs> for our wet market. Uh, basic perspective of idea of the wet market because when we approach the site, the wet market site is actually opposite to the school. So um, if we look at the okay, so. This opposite here is actually a school. It's an international Malay school. Uh, so the school students, after the, you know, there will be a lot of bus which is uh, dropping by on this area. So if you look at it, uh, the site is actually surrounded by a few of mature trees. And this tree is actually a durian tree and also a few of mature trees surrounding it. So how we plan the site, uh, you know, um, the brief is actually calling for, for uh, integrated of uh, wet market. So the section, the brief is also calling for a uh, uh, food store, restaurants, uh, community sports center, and also the wet market. So we analyze, we know in order to, before we start, we start with the precedent study, like what you all did in school. So, um, so we know that, that we identify what is the problem with most of the centralized wet market issue in Malaysia. And we don't want to repeat the same failure that what's happening. So we analyze the PJ Town Old Market and we ident identify what is the problem with the wet market. It's actually sometimes it, there's no there's a dedicated loading and unloading area, but there's no segregation between wet and the dry area. That's why it's caused uh, a wet is entire market as well. And then because of this wetness, it caused a slippery to the floor and it's not convenient for everyone to, uh, to walk around the wet market. So when talking about wet market, the first thing we have to target is a lot of technical item. So we want to get this thing uh, correct first and make sure that it's all done, uh, um, the technical part has been done properly before we look into a, a 
the design uh, design uh, process. Um, we look at City Katija market in Kota Baru. It's all these are very uh, well known market and also Indi market in uh, KL, which is a new market. Uh, we identify that the pro the the important of wet market is you need a dedicated loading and unloading area because this loading and unloading area is where the daily life where they bring in the wet uh, item and this is an area where they actually will cause a wetness to the to the market and then hawker store is separate from the outdoor and a lot of sunlight yeah. hello <laughs> okay uh so so basically uh, we look into the planning of the hygiene of the wet market. We know that this, uh, the, uh, this is a concept of the wet market where we look into wet, hot and smelly. So design again the flatness and segregation of floor that allow a water to run everywhere. The more surface exposed to the water and the dirtier the wet market. And then item two, we actually look at now, we, you know, the loading and unloading area, we compartmentalize it, make sure the loading and unloading area coming to the wet market area only. And another thing is also we move into the public zone. The public zone where the movement and window with loading and loading area in the blue zone. And then the, the, there's actually barrier segregation between the wet and the dry area. And if you look, look at it, we also we look into high ceiling spaces. And this high ceiling spaces is allowed sunlight and also the natural ventilation into the wet market. And we look into community, uh, the community of Malaysians, we like to join tables and then we look into a flexibility of tables and then recycle. We, rather than chopping down the tree, like I mentioned, we introduce a series of canopy. This canopy is a loose uh, individual item which is, can actually integrate together to the site and uh, according to the, the positions of the tree, and also the one asa is here, a position of the tree and, and also the, um, <clears throat> the site accordingly. Because the intention is, is also, is this series of Sponopi is also, uh, we want to uh, bring back the idea of this uh, street market that we have uh, in the, our old days. So there's a connection between the school and the market. We provide a plaza in front of the plaza so the student can, the best school bus can drop off the school and then connect back to school. And, and the center part of the market is actually a, a playground. So we know that uh, if we, we know that, you know, in the old days, if let's say the woman's, uh, the mother's or the father's is the one who go to the market, why don't we provide a market for everyone? Meaning the children, the fathers and the mothers and can also go to the market as well. So in this market, we actually provide a cafeteria, uh, so-called a store along the way of the market. At the same time, we also have the uh, uh, market on the other side. Let's say that the fathers or the mothers go to buy the uh, daily uh, daily item so the fathers or mothers can actually enjoy uh, either one can enjoy at the coffee store while they're seeing the kids is playing at the center of the courts and um, we look into uh, time is time and space is important to us you know and the daily time because we know that in order the issue of the wet market is also we know that in the daily time uh, market use in the morning and then evening and the night time is not really you'll be abandoned. So if we don't want it to become, become an urban dead space, so we also provide a space according to time. During and the afternoon time, it can convert as a stationary store that, that can supervise or can be serving to the residents as well. Uh, we look into the detail, how to dry out, ventilate the store, you know, and then how the store been placed and how people pick this, uh, the uh, the fish and also the the wet item in order to avoid them to uh, enhance the wetness we look into the floor mat where you know to avoid when people stepping up on the water can encourage uh, the wetness in everywhere of course the translucion should is also allow the softness of the land the, the the sun and the the wind to coming in and of course we we also look into a big expand that we can help to evaporate the hot uh, the what the wetness at the same time, we and the idea is also looking into the solar chimney where we heat up and then can transmit out the hot air um, uh, 
um, as fast as possible. This is the overall. Um, if you look back, this is uh, actually the overall planning. So if you can see, the front court is actually a plaza. We provide this one is a multiple plaza, which is a multifunction plaza. It can convert as a plaza space and event space. At the same time, when it need to be used as a badminton, can use as badminton. And all this uh, area is actually a dry store. And then when come to this, this area is actually a wet store where you can see the truck and loading and loading bay is coming to here without disturbing, uh, without, it's a first tier of um, uh, defense against the water to avoid the water spreading to the entire uh, entire uh, market and towards here is all the food store where people can enjoy their coffee and breakfast on the towards the here at the same time there's a series of courtyard where the children playground can play around and towards the end is actually a restaurant so this one I go through so this is a series of canopy if you look at the section is you can see that the view is from the the side is slightly sloping towards the end towards the front and um, the, towards the end is actually a uh, uh, restaurant and towards the front is actually a plaza. Uh, this is a view. Of course, um, one th thing is uh, we, we, we the, uh, the judge is highlighting is about the rain of coming in. We did provide that the connection between the canopy to avoid the rain of coming in. This is the event plaza. Uh, we choose to, and then one of the judge is actually commenting that um, because the structure is too expensive to be built, uh, that's why they didn't choose our scheme as a winning scheme. They chose a more affordable one in order for our government to be built. So this is Event Plaza. At the same time, it serves as a um, badminton court as well. And we look into the detail how the dry store of how the store of the dry area have been uh, designed. We look into different different type of stores we know that in wet market most of the common Malaysia what the Malaysia did is they did a common standard store for everyone but this one we designed the store as specific for each type to avoid uh, to encourage the usage and easy for the seller and also the buyer at the same time to avoid the water uh, segregation around uh, this is the area view and this is the sectional towards the front okay and uh, this PEM MGBC headquarters is actually a national competition. We got the first honorable mention. Um, this project is actually calling to build a headquarters for Malaysian Green Building Association. Uh, the site is actually looking at UPM, which is the, your school. Um, so what we look at when we visit the site at that time, we know that it's actually next to the river. It's actually close to the rugby, rugby center there, rugby stadium there. Uh, so the existing site is a flat land, but there's a big tree is surrounding it. And then we, what we intend to plan, plan to do, instead of building um, a building, uh, typically, which is typically building a, uh, put a building and then we plant the landscape. Can we do the other way around, which is we the plant, design the landscape around and then put the building surrounding it. So that's how we started with the idea. And we also look into environmentally which is how to cool down the building because it's meant to Malaysian green as um, building so uh, environmentally is most important idea that we want to address uh, instead of building a massive building towards the site but we want to create a found building which is can actually allow for not so obvious of the uh, there's a building coming up towards uh, the existing site so um, this is the space that we plan along. Uh, um, the coming in, ingress and ingress, kapakan here. Entrance drop off, this is a reception where people can walk to series of meeting room and area. Behind here is also a long journey of the office, uh, their standard office, and also this part is the cafeteria. And the way how we plan is operating hours. We look into the operating hour according to the brief. And then there's a after hours what is going to be happen, and it's a series of uh, element uh, that segregate and be planned along the park area, and then where there is a series of green roof covering it. Okay, um, the idea is actually 
uh, very conceptual, which is we try to pump in the water from the river, filtration it, and then actually cool down from the building below. So the whole entire building is actually floating up above the above the water. At the same time, it's uh, helped to cool down. Of course, it's helped to cool down the uh, give the environment of the to to the site. At the same time, it's helped to cool down the water. I uh, cool down the building. So we look into this idea because this project we actually collaborate with uh, Malaysian Green Build um, Fenestra, which is the green consultant. So uh, the chief of Fenestra, which is um, uh, Masood and also Miss Chong, they have an idea that this uh, wind chimney, this hot chimney, been used to suck up the hot air. Uh, standard chimney is actually uh, is a made up of series of fin of aluminium. Uh, that actually can reflect and also um, help to heat up the entire tube, uh, solar tube, and then at the same time, hot air will suck up and then you cool down the entire space below. So, in order to heat up this area, we also and uh, they also have this idea that putting a, a sources which is can heat up the uh, hot air chimney, and at the same time suck out the hot air. So instead of putting one chimney at the entire site, we we take this idea across, which is, you know, completely suck out the hot air and then, you know, from the below is actually with the water and then the cool air will rise. Okay. Uh, purely on environmental approach, hot air will going up and then um, when the cool air bring, uh, breeze through, then it will be flowing up from the water area. We did the simulations, hot air and cool air simulation is actually, this is the uh, simulation that you can see is really a uh, uh, sustainable approach that can cooling down the building. So if you look at the entire perspective, it's actually a found building when people can actually go across the uh, building and then climb across uh, the entire uh, headquarters. Okay, <clears throat> in the auditorium, we also instead of looking into the solid closed auditorium, we look into natural light coming in. So if they want to use a black box, they can actually just cut them off. Uh, this is a series of undulating roof and also undulating floor, which allow um, um, the people who inside the MGBC area to enjoy the landscape. And we even um, look into, if you look into the side of the building, it's actually water cascading now. The edge of the roof is actually the series of water cascading now, putting out the building as well. And of course, we look into simulations of Santa, and this is the overall view. Okay, then this one, this competition is actually go beyond scale real. It's an international competition organized by Singapore uh, architect. Uh, the participants uh, things around across the country, uh, across the globe, and then. So this I the brief of the competition is actually calling for. A different type of uh, usage for this uh, container because in every year Singapore have almost two millions of recycled uh, re so-called a uh, 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 container that need to be thrown away. So this architect, which firm, uh, they they are they are actually uh, have this idea of how to upcycle this container. So the container is actually, uh, you know, uh, from the existing, instead of throwing away all this container, how to use this container and then, you know, can be part of the um, part of the usage that can be transported to around the world. So, um, but the question is about the brief is, is too wide uh, that they don't know, they don't have the specific of what they want to do with this container. So, um, what they do is they come up with a brief that too general that this container can be anything, you know. So uh, that is a challenge of the brief that what we intend to do. And then there is also no site relevant uh, in this project because the container will be placed in everywhere around the world. Okay, so what we, the idea what we do is instead of, uh, instead of expanding the 20, uh, 20 footer on container, and stack out all together like what typically most of the people use. We subdivide it into five modules. Um, make each module is flexible enough to accommodate for each type of different type of usage. And we study the container, the rigidity of the container, the single module, and then the single module container structure, multiple module and multiple container uh, structure. So from here we integrate in the uh, 
so-called the track. And this track we subdivide into each room that allow for flexible usage into the each container. And we look into customizations of the, your container. Basically, if the purchaser want to buy this container, they can actually customize according to their needs. Uh, so our customization, of course, come with the customization of furniture as well. So um, at the same time, you can choose like step one, you choose your layout. Second thing, you choose your facade, what kind of facade you want to modularize according to your container. And then after that, we fabricate and then we install at site. So um, each module, each layout module also, there is a customization, which is uh, some is screen side space, some is a study area, bathroom module. And then we have dining and kitchen module, we have living module. And then we have a bunk bed module, staircase module, and then kitchen module. All this is a module that can fit into the, the, the cut design specific for each uh, container. So, of course, uh, this one, I believe, um, as mostly of you have seen before, a flexibility of furniture. But it's, uh, this one is very suitable to, uh, this idea is very suitable to this project, which is actually customized and also modularized the, the furniture according to the space. Because of limitations of the limitation have in the container, so we have to maximize the spaces according to the flexible of uh, furniture. And we also look into facade, how we, they can actually customize a different type of facade according to their needs. And this is the uh, flexibility of the, uh, of the facade. And so from there, the, own, the buyer can actually choose in different, different kind of um, or, um, uh, usage. Because one of the brief is actually calling for disaster relief type of the, as a container, let's say there's a disaster, they can send this container to become a disaster home. <clears throat> so we come up with the idea of this, how can with our module, flexible module, we can combine all together. Disaster relief type one, disaster relief type two. And then they can also combine as a budget hotel, if people purchase this container. And then they can also combine to this as a student housing, <clears throat> student housing in different type. And then they can also uh, do it as an individual habitat if you want to do it as a, your house and they also can combine as a uh, combination habitats in the entire uh, house that you intend to do. Uh, we also look into the combine of habitat four. They can stack out vertically and they also can slide out different way. So, so overall module they also calling for let's say that Singapore in future they want to use this container as part of the housing area. Uh, so what we are going to do with this kind of housing? So we give them a sort of like a, a basic a conceptual idea of what the housing can be, <clears throat> and we look into the technical data uh, to look into make sure that the container really can be usable. Of course, container architecture is nothing new, uh, but in order to uh, uh, adjust and also design according to the brief and also according to the competition uh, requirement is something which is we going through and also thoughtfully do. Uh, the another one which is the future house, micro house, uh, is actually a small houses that calling for a competition idea. Let's say that, uh, um, let's say that people don't have a big land or people want to use this uh, house for a small land, uh, uh, small area, what they can do with these houses. So we participate in these competitions, uh, we won the first prize. Uh, we call our project DIY plug and play. It's slightly same with the container houses, um, but we, this, in this case, we use it as a cube. So same thing we do with the future, we look at the issue, the future house could be a micro house. It's a small houses that economically, because of the uh, you know, uh, income that we want, we require to have a small houses. Um, then we look into the time, as mentioned earlier, space-time relationship. Sometime in the daytime you use this space, and the nighttime you use the other space. So in eventually you don't have a space which is abandoned as like a dead space in house. Huh? So a uh, step of ordering the design assemble, you can actually order through your internet or iPad. So there is a series of steps. Then we deliver the housing towards a particular area. And then this housing can be actually easily assembled and installed as part of your house. 
Um, so we look into the principle of this module. They can actually combine as a bachelor module. Bachelor module, there's basically you have a uh, so-called a toilet accessory module, and then you have the bed module. And then let's say, for example, development of module, you can develop now, you are single. In future, you might get married. And you have two kids. Let's say you have the two kids, you have grandchildren. So this is a series of developments of the module that we're looking at. So we have a couple module. Let's say that we have a courtyard at the center. We have a kitchen and service module. And then we have a resting module. That's here. Uh, then we have a family module of four. Which is can, this is the living module, a dining module. This is a living module. This is a kitchen module and this is a bedroom module. And this is a family module of six, which is they can actually buy this kind of standard module and then they can plug it in according to what they need in their house. And uh, of course, this thing is also come with the flexible design specific material and also a specific uh, furniture system to suit to the small living space they require. Okay. And uh, this kind of module can actually can stack up as a housing and can be do as a portable home and also can stack vertical or either in the rooftop. Okay, another competition that we uh, won is also a first prize international competition. It's a One Heart Foundation Eco Village in op an orphanage center in uh, Soy in Kenya. Uh, it's actually organized by an architect firm in Australia. Uh, uh, he's also co-founder of the uh, One Heart Foundation. Um, so the is actually a, a self-funded uh, uh, foundation, which is the with the so-called they have a center of orphanage in the, around the world in uh, around in Kenya. So in this project, we also uh, won the architecture festival award and also the future uh, project awards. Uh, project challenge on this project, uh, the challenge for this project is basically the site. The site is actually far away removed area where there is no, um, it's, it's hard, hardly accessible. And then material to deliver to the site is actually uh, very limited. So um, it's actually, so from this project, um, uh, we have saw other been uh, other competitors as well, some design in a very fancy way, but um, they didn't address according to the the brief they're calling because the site is actually uh, far away and then the limitation of material. So what we start from there as an idea how we want to you know uh, build and uh, design this project. So we look at the culture of uh, Kenya. There's uh, this Maasai home, which is a series of round home, and the building based on the mass system. So we, the idea is actually to have this orphanage school that, you know, we have a series of small little room uh, spaces. They can actually protected by uh, a big canopy and surrounding by the big courtyard. Um, we know that this area, Masa, is where, uh, of course, we study the topography and also the weather. Um, the, night, the daytime is very hot and the nighttime is very cold. So how we want to... There's a, there's a series of programs that we're calling for. It's actually a school, it's a so-called primary and secondary school. And they also call it for a community hall. And then they're also calling for orphanage center towards the end. All these are briefs that are required by the organizer. So um, basically we segregate into private and uh, public zone and also semi-public zone because they also what they intended is um, the community need to serve the center. At the same time, the community also the pub, the community cannot directly to access too much to the private zone, so this segregation is very important. And then where the entrance coming in, the access to the public is also important. And the idea of series of uh, the main idea of the entire scheme is actually a series of interactions uh, spaces that we created in between spaces of this uh, small little uh, uh, so-called around cocoon that we intended to to contain a uh, program spaces and then the in between spaces that we create they can learn along uh, while they journey from the one school to the next school so if you see um, everyone should be connected to the field 
and then there's also a farming where they is actually serving the community and then the community is also serving them and they we segregate be, between the you know the high school and the towards the end is the orphanage center and then you can see that this is a serious interaction from one linkage and going to the courtyard at the same time going surrounding to the uh, each of the uh, classroom if you look at the plan it's a series of classroom circulate around at the center of the courts and this is the court where the people, children will come out here and play the next one is the primary school they also have a series of courts and then following uh, there is a field and also the farm and towards the end is actually their uh, uh, home for the orphanage um, a lot of people when if they don't know about the reason why we chose uh, um, certain material and also certain shape why we're doing it and there's a reason why we do that it's not because of we like the round shape and then we apply for everyone in the round shape uh, it's not because we like the bamboo that's why we choose the bamboo um, not so much of that but it's basically purely on the site and also the brief condition okay if you look and also if you look at the thing uh, the section right how we want to study is uh, in, in the daytime we know that it's classroom need to be cool up and then how we suction up the hot air allow the hot air to go out at the same time we give a double roof to shape the entire uh, classroom bureau and then with the uh, giant tree where the children can come down and play um, we know that this classroom is a series of um, circular classroom uh, walking around the big circle so people can the children can learn in between and on this in between spaces and it's a series of uh, why we chose a bamboo because we know that at the site uh, uh, and also we using a mud uh, brick which is a site local material to build the project and the mud brick itself is also cooling down the building uh, very well um, the reason why we chose bamboo is because uh, bamboo is harvesting in very short time and it's very sustainable and entire school is actually a self-sustaining school uh, without relying too much on the uh, material from the importing material from the outside or from the city um, the, they also can use this bamboo as a maintenance for their own uh, school uh, as well <coughs> so of course this is common that you look into the harvesting the rain to use the, for the toilet uh, okay um, of course in the front we expose it as a way nature which is we use a mud uh, to blend with the surrounding at the inside we want to give a different experience to the kids uh, we play with different kind of classroom with a different kind of color uh, and then you know we study about their culture they like to tell storytelling so we create a series of uh, sunken spaces where the teacher can actually talk to them and then we create an intermediate uh, place where the children can actually running around um, at the same time, you know, they can interact with the student below. Okay, on this, the other side happened on the opposite because as I mentioned earlier, is um, the daytime is hot, the nighttime is cold. So on this project, um, on, the, on the orphanage center, what we do is we create a concrete uh, wall which is this is concrete brick uh, which is they use uh, to sort of heat in the daytime they can actually heat up the room at the night time they will release out the hot air to cool down the room this is where the children will sleep so we take advantage of that material to create a specific for uh, the specific usage rather than um, we use it because we like the material purposes okay and the same time we uh, this is quite common. I think everyone uh, can come across this idea as well, which is the uh, communication between the farming and also the fishing pond, which is they can actually interrelated to each other. And this is the overall image uh, to the to the entire site. You can see that this is a orphanage center towards the end. It's a single roof, which is they're using a concrete uh, wall. Okay, and then when you're walking towards the other end, it's actually a primary school. This is a playground, and then this is a secondary school, and this is the community hall that they they actually are serving the, uh, the use by community as well. The last project that we want to share is actually the highway cruise blocks. Uh, it's a Club 2018 My House pilot project. 
Um, this project is actually invited by Pam to to have have, have all the architect uh, to come up with the idea how to target the low cost housing in Malaysia. So what we uh, we also want the participants we propose our idea on the on the um, housing that we think that is we can actually help to reduce now the construction cost in Malaysia. Um, of course, we know that we study the entire project. The main important one of the big contribution to the cost of construction is actually the land cost. So what if we don't build on the land itself? You know, um, so we look at the highway. There's a big chance of highway in everywhere. We know that highway it become like a culture in Malaysia as well, and also the impatient city, right? And we try to avoid that, but it's keep on growing and growing. So if we take this uh, this this advantage as advantage to our project, what can we do with this? So we will look at the demography of the highway. It's actually a lot. Uh, this is a basic, uh, simple, quick analysis that we do. It's actually take out 45% of the city. And if we combine all this idea with the housing, the MRT, and also the highway together, what can we do? Can we combine as an integrated living? <clears throat> so we look at the site. Uh, we choose. I mean, the site can be chosen by us. Uh, we choose actually the central station close to Klana Jaya, and we analyze this is the size of the highway, and then this is the MRT station on top, uh, Glen Mary LRT station. So this is the view. This is the amount of the highway that you can see. So what we propose is, if let's say we can build above, instead of building high up, instead of building high up uh, as a vertical housing, instead of building high up as a vertical housing, what if we look at the typology of horizontal housing? Uh, you know, um, so instead of everyone fighting towards the sky, can we go along the, the, the road or the river? So this is a road on the highway. You can see two sides of the highway. And then uh, on top here is actually a car park. And then on top here is actually a uh, housing that we intend to propose. This is an LRT station that we're looking at. So imagine that if you, this housing is above the LRT station, you're taking daily line, you come down to the LRT station, you go back to your, uh, you go to works, and then you come back with your LRT station, and then you can go back to your home easily. Uh, so instead, we look at the, Typology instead of um, building high up, we build horizontal long way. So we call it cruise ship because it's uh, like a cruise ship and they can expand it along the, as long as the highway go. You can see the LRT is uh, coming up from the building and then with the housing on top of the, um, of the highway as well. So it can be a series of this horizontal going up non stop along the highway as long as they can go. Okay, if you study, if it's from the housing point of view and the entire messing, how we approach is um, we study the private and public area and then we study the messing block. From this messing block, it's not so much of the form. If you look at it as the form, then you will see as a form. If you see as a space, it's a series of forms that are crafting up the space that allow for people to interact. Okay. Uh, it's the same thing, if you want the space, you need a form to confine it. So how do you play with the form to define the space? So this is a streetscape that we're looking at. And then this is the pedestrian circulations that we're looking at. Yeah, this is a green approach. Uh, car circulations and then residential mix and uh, sun path. Uh, so if you look at this, is a diagram to show that different type of uh, Car park. Uh, this is a highway area. This is LRT track. This will be the car park situation. And then this will be the housing with a series of courts of gardens and the activity courts that actually is surrounding it. Um, this will be the housing streetscape that we actually cutting out along, along the highway, uh, along the housing block. And then on top of that is actually a series of roof garden and also jogging track and path that human can come up to the roof to interact and um, in go infinity across. So below is a highway, like I mentioned here. This part is actually the car park area and the LRT. And then this is the housing with the rooftop garden on top. Uh, we look into sustainable, you know, that how we can possible, because we know that highway will come with noise and the pollution. 
So what can we do? This is just an idea that we can, is it possible that we can suck out the hot air, uh, suck out the pollution air and then transfer it become a uh, fresh air for the, for the housing area. Uh, but this is conceptual. Of course, we analyze that there is actually this kind of technology. Of course, how much you want to invest is uh, another issue. Uh, we also look into the spin, wind speed. If the highway passing through, there's a series of wind tunnels that can actually generate the energy um, effective for the highway, uh, the LRT station. Um, series of courts that are defined by the form where the housing actually surrounding by a series of uh, interaction court by among the community. They can link between one court to the next court. Uh, they can even have a night plaza or night streets uh, live on top of the housing area. You can see that this is a series of uh, activity. Uh, we were looking at the vertical street, so-called higher level street instead of just only on the ground. I also in the intermediate spaces. Um, look into the, you know, the five the shop houses, we have uh, overspill of the split spaces. Uh, this is a court. And this is a rooftop garden. Uh, this is the overall image. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hi. Thank you so yeah. much, Architect Adric Chu. Hi, yeah. sir. I hope everyone enjoy it and gain many insight. So, um, we got some questions from the floor. So, I will read it out. Um, from one participant, she asked that um, she has a question that how to reduce the noise effect if the building is built near to the highway. Uh, there's many ways to reduce. Either you set the building away from the highway. Uh, one way is through the planning. Uh, second way is actually, of course, uh, we can do with uh, uh, screening. And then, of course, uh, horizontal distance away from the highway and also vertical distance away from the highway is also from start of the planning. Uh, that you actually can, you know, uh, uh, and uh, so-called plan away from the, reduce the noise away from the highway. Um, because you see, uh, there's a lot of, uh, of course, we don't look into physical blocking because some actually using a back of the car to actually screen off the highway. For me, I think it's, um, it's not really good in terms of urban scale because um, sometimes you imagine that you're driving by to, to the entire city scale, which is everywhere is a high block. Uh, it would be nice that you can actually set away and then create this kind of uh, in between the, the setting away of the uh, you also give a human skill uh, to the street at the same time it creates a, a pocket of space where people can actually use yeah yeah any more question from the floor yeah any? same we have a question so he was asking yeah. that from your last project what solution Any question do you have? Yeah, so we have a question. No, no question, Patrick. Very good presentation. Sorry. Thanks. Thanks for supporting, man. Uh, yeah, just, in, just introduce you all to everyone, uh, to, to this uh, famous architect, Mr. Wan Asha. He's from Koda. We used to collaborate in one of the competition. Very good guy. Eric, you are, you are gooder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Any more? Uh, one more? Yeah, same way I have a question. Yeah. Just ask um, from your last project, what mm. solution do you have for the noise of the highway and LRT station? Because uh, we know that both of them are having a huge issue on the noise pollution. So, yeah, since I love you, your see. project is right on the top of the both LRT and the highway. Yeah. Oh, so what's the question? I lost you just now. Oh, so he was asking that uh, any solution regarding, because the project is built above the highway and LRT station. In terms so of the noise, is it? Yeah, in terms of the noise and 
the um, the air pollution and stuff. Yeah. Uh, what? Yeah. The the is the, the this is also some of the question that raised during my presentation last time. The idea that we walk into it is first thing. Of course, we have to lift it up the. Uh, there's a certain distance away from the highway to the housing area and then of course we place a one layer which is a car park in between and then also before that there's a LRT station in between so the transition noise coming up is actually through the entry from the LRT station uh, transmission from the highway coming out to the housing area from the sideway we actually screen off by using the environmental uh, tunnel that I mentioned to actually generate some energy and also using the green to uh, sort of like a, a, a so-called screen off from the noise. Uh. Yeah, of course, um, well, I, I, I will say uh, it, uh, the, this is one way that we are approaching, you know, people are passing through the the far below the car is passing through below and then but the housing is on top is actually quite distant away from the, the uh, car uh, also the traffic below yeah i think your answer did answer his question there's some question from pro from Safiya adha ramzi she Hello? was asking that yeah can you hear me sir yeah yeah Okay, uh, there's one more question. She was asked, um, she has a question on the plug and play. She uh -huh. was asked, what type of connection is used between the structure? What type of connection is used between the structure? It's more like a technical question. Oh, um, we looking, it's actually a, stand, a standard detail, which is we use most of the time is the L angle. Uh, we also look into U channel where we can create the track uh, for the uh, for the tracking system they can actually change the track according to the usage and uh, the connections bet between the um, it, the plug and play is purely just a uh, L angle yeah and then one yeah. more question is from Ray Sin Chong he was asking that what Hello. generates Sorry, sir, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah. Uh, he was asking that what generates the circular form as seen from some of your design work, such as the wet market canopies and the African school? Oh, just a coincidence is the same form only. It doesn't mean that, you know, uh, uh, that because as I mentioned to you, the wet market is because of the canopy that we intend to do. Of course, we can choose a, um, a square form. It's not an issue. Uh, the square or the round is not so much of the form that we chosen, but it's so much on the re relationship to the entire uh, project and also the site. Um, we choose a circular form. It's also symbolized. Uh, it's actually a intermission from the canopy, the umbrella as well. Um, and then, of course, the, for the house as and uh, and also the for the Kenya project is purely because of the inspiration from the Maasai housing, as I mentioned just now. So it's just coincident. Um, of course, it's too, there's also, i done many square form. Yeah. yeah. I think that answer his question. Yeah. Uh, no, Shahira Jeffrey, she has a question about the one heart module. The wall is made from concrete, so doesn't it produce more heat during the day due to the environmental factor? Uh, I can't, I lost you just now. What is the question? Yeah, regarding one of your project, the one heart module, uh -huh. the wall is made from concrete. So she was asking that doesn't it produce like more heat during the day due yeah. to the... Yes. The purpose we choose the concrete block for the orphanage home is because, as I mentioned to you, the site is actually in the site is actually very hot in the daytime, and very very cold in the nighttime. Uh, orphanage uh, sell, they don't stay in the center in the daytime because they need to go to school. So that particular 
center is actually empty during daytime. And then we purposely use this material to heat up the room. So it, because the concrete, the nature of the concrete is they absorb heat and then they release heat very slow. So when the nighttime, why the concrete house is very hot? Because at the nighttime, they release out the heat. So we take as this advantage to, you know, uh, cool down the, uh, the orphanage when they come back and sleep at night. Okay, um, there's another question from a participant. So uh, she asked that yeah. after hearing your completed proposal for the competitions, is there any advice or strategies that you can share to everyone here in order to increase the chance to win the design competition? Like oh. any strategies, yeah. Uh, strategy to win the competition. First thing is you don't think of the need to win the competition if you join the competition. Uh, the second, uh, the second thing I want to advise is uh, you have to read the brief properly what they are asking for um, because the brief is the most important. It's like um, the client asks you to design a house, you don't submit him to design a stadium, right? So the brief is very important. What is, what is actually the brief or the project is calling for? Second is about the idea of the surrounding uh, site that you actually inter interlook into it. And then from there, um, you have to meet the timeline, right? Of course, uh, the planning of the, in order to get the, the project out towards the end is also important. Uh, is like what I, which is what I find most of the student or most of the architecture student or architect itself is also uh, quite bad in managing uh, timeline because if you manage well the timeline, you can actually produce a, a quite, quite a good work towards the end. Yeah. And no rush minute, uh, last minute works because uh, the idea of last meeting only come up with the idea. I think uh, that kind of uh, psychology we have to uh, take away. Correct one? Yeah, um, sir. Um, I'm having some line issues, so I will pass it to Guma. He's also the MC for this event. Yeah, can. Hi, AR Adric. Hi. Hi, uh, okay. The next um, question. Um, Interesting uh, lecture series. What is the strategy to stand out and to win from other participants? Uh, strategy to <laughs> strategy <laughs> to stand out and win from other participants. As I mentioned to you, first thing when you do the pro you enter the competition, you don't uh, have the um, don't expect um, so called. Uh, of course, everyone hope to can win. But you just enter as like you do the best for the project. Uh, there is a, a mentology that you need to do. Uh, second thing is, of course, win lose is not a important thing. It's a process that you enter, and also uh, the experience that you go through. And um, the, another thing is how to stand out from among the competition scheme. Is it's good to do a precedent study of what people have done. Um, that is very, very important to me um, because a lot of architects believe that they, uh, they have actually created something new in the market, but maybe what they propose is actually people have done before. So um, it's very important this uh, to remove the self-ego away, to look at what other people have done and then analyze that uh, what people have done, why it's so great uh, and why um, we don't repeat what they're doing. Um, I don't mean that you have to copy what they are doing. You have to see what they have done and then analyze why they can able to win the scheme. And then from there only you generate your own idea. So you don't repeat the same thing that what other people will do. Okay. Um, hope that answers your question, Janwe. Is there any more questions from the, uh, from the audience? If no, um, then we can um, end this soon. So, okay. So, uh, thank you for joining us for this evening. Thank you, AR Edric, for the 
uh, very interesting sharing. Okay, thank you. All right. Is it done? Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, we are we are about done now. So thank you, uh, guys, for joining us. Um, do keep in, All right. keep in touch with us. Thanks, with our thanks everyone for listening. I hope that my uh, lecture sharing can help uh, you all in terms of uh, coming out with the idea in your school. At the same time, also um, inspire you all to do more on the competition and challenge yourself in, in terms of locally and internationally. And uh, of course, uh, don't take uh, winning or losing is an important thing because it's just part of the process. Um, sometimes you see many great um, architects, they also lose many times before they actually win some. So it's, we also go on through all this process. So um, just take it as an enjoyment will do. Okay, thanks everyone. Thanks Thank everyone. So yeah. do keep, keep in touch with us with our Masa Instagram and Facebook for the next um, online lecture series. All right. So until then, I will see you guys next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.